Welcome to Epic Rehab. Hello, I'm Dr. Leonard Matheson, Director of Research and Training for Epic Rehab. This video lesson focuses on the MTAP Analytics software that I developed to help you get the most out of the Multidimensional Task Ability Profile. I use the MTAP Analytics software to identify inconsistencies in responding, to confirm or disconfirm full effort, to identify a fearful or avoidant response to physically demanding tasks, and to compare the person's subjective responses with observed behavior. MTAP Analytics uses MTAP responses collected either online from MTAP systems or through one of the paper and pencil versions of MTAP available from Matheson Development. In addition to improving your clinical or forensic analysis of MTAP data, MTAP Analytics offers in-depth practice with the MTAP using three different case examples. In today's video lesson, we will look at the first of these case examples, a 32-year-old woman named Cindy who has a low back injury. Then after we're done with this lesson, you can use the analytics software to give Cindy a knee injury in addition to her back injury and find out what MTAP tells you. And then, if you're really mean, you can add on a hand injury to poor Cindy. The MTAP analytics software is available from MathesonDevelopment.com. Now, MTAP is the most recent version of a series of pictorial activity task sorts developed by the U.S. Spine and Sport Foundation in San Diego, California, led by Dr. Vert Mooney. MTAP uses the pictorial activity task sort approach to measurement of functional capacity evaluation that began with the West tool sort and the Loma Linda activity sort in 1983 and 1986. We have published additional instruments using this approach, including the spinal function sort in 1989 and the hand function sort in 1994. The MTAP can be administered either by a computer kiosk, online, or through a test booklet. Pictorial activity and task sorts, or PATS, gather self-report and observational data using a combination of pictures and texts. This is in contrast to traditional tests that use simple text descriptions, such as unload an automobile or write something. You could ask whether or not a person could do these, and you'd get some data that would be somewhat useful, or you could be more specific and you'd get better data, more reliable and valid and useful, or you could add a simple line drawing and get even better data, which is what we've done with the PATS approach. And then after you develop these really neat items, you could marry them to a really nifty rating scale that you could calibrate with modern technology known as item response theory of the type developed by Georg Rosch. Dr. Rosch was a Danish mathematician who believed that the traditional methods of testing left a lot to be desired, which we also believe. Item response theory starts with the idea that every item has a specific level of difficulty. For example, Dig in a garden with a spade shovel to plant a small tree is somewhat more difficult than unloading two 10-pound grocery bags from the trunk of an automobile. With item response theory, the focus is on the specific level of difficulty for each of these items. Dr. Raj developed strategies for measuring a specific difficulty level. We have used this approach with more than 20,000 subjects to come up with a specific difficulty level for all of the items in our library. In fact, we've been able to collect so much data that we can break down the difficulty level in terms of slightly different scores for men and for women and slightly different scores across the age span. The second idea in item response theory is that the relationship between every item and every response in the rating scale has a specific level of difficulty. If we have a five-level rating scale from able to unable, each of the responses has a specific level of difficulty attached to it. The third idea in item response theory is that the difficulty level of each item and response combination can be compared to the difficulty level of every other item and response combination. Let me use the two items we've been looking at to give you an idea of what we can do with this. Starting with unloading two 10-pound grocery bags from the trunk of an automobile, here are its difficulty levels. These are not the actual numbers that we use because those are trade secrets, 
but believe me, they've been carefully checked and double-checked and are part of our peer-reviewed research that we've published in major journals. So, the person who's able to do this with no restriction has a minimum ability score that is equivalent to the full difficulty score for ABLE, in this case, 21.2. And you can see how the ability scores diminish depending on how restricted the person reports themselves to be on this item. Here's the other item that we're going to compare. Dig in a garden with a spade shovel to plant a small tree. This is much more difficult. Instead of 21.2, it's 64.8. A person who indicates that they're able with this item has an ability score of at least 64.8. And just as we saw with the unloading of grocery bags, the ability scores diminish gradually as the restrictions become more severe. And so if we compare both items, unloading the grocery bags and digging with a spade shovel, this is what we get. Lining them up side by side, we can do a comparison. And guess what we find? The wonderful thing about item response theory is that we get to compare the combinations of items and responses between items and actually across the whole test. In this simple comparison, the person who's slightly restricted for unloading should probably indicate very restricted for digging if they're being consistent. Of course, that's not all that we look at. We compare all of the items with each other, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. But let's take half a step back. I want to give you one more idea to consider. Let's compare four different items. A person lifting a 100 pound crate from the ground to eye level. A person mixing cement in a wheelbarrow. A person using a floor jack to raise an automobile to change a tire. And our friend unloading two 10 pound grocery bags from the trunk of an automobile. We can now put these in order from low demand to high demand, ranging from unloading the grocery bags to lifting the 10 pound crate to eye level. And actually, we can do that with job analysis items as well. These are photographs of three random tasks that I evaluated at a foundry in Southern California several years ago. The foundry makes high strength parts for combat aircraft and naval ships. This man is standing at a grinder holding a 45 pound high strength part against a grinding wheel to shape it to specifications. This next man is standing at his workstation using a pneumatic deburrer. He's cleaning the reverse thrust gate for a jet engine, the air brakes that stop the jet from rolling after landing. These men are operating a floor jack to move an 800 pound piece of the housing for a naval Gatling gun. And now here they are in the proper order from deburring the reverse thrust gate to using a floor jack to move the housing to holding the high strength part against the grinding wheel. And now let me bring in the PATS self-report items in the order we've already established. It would be useful to know how they compare in difficulty in terms of the job analysis items. And remember, we've already done the calibration for the self-report PATS items. And what happens is that we can use the same scale to calibrate the foundry job tasks. This is what we get. The pneumatic deburrer task has a difficulty level of 28. The hoist operator task has a difficulty level of 37. And the heavy grinder task has a difficulty level of 50. And this is what we get when we co-calibrate the items. What we've done here is to use the same scale and place the job tasks above the scale using the scale numbers that we use to measure the PATS items on the bottom of the scale. Several of our PATS items are off to the left and really don't compare to the demands that these workers face in the foundry. But they help to calibrate three other PATS items that are similar in terms of difficulty to the tasks faced in the foundry. We can now mathematically compare the difficulty level of all the job analysis tasks with our PATS items. And then we can take the next step and compare a worker. We'll call her Sally Jones, who was hired on December 1, 2006 with an ability score using the same scale of 35. She can do the pneumatic deburrer job, but would really be overmatched if she were placed on the heavy grinder job. It would be a stretch for her to work as a hoist operator. And then we can now look at Jorge Cardenas and see how he compares. And we find that he has an ability score of 54 
when he was hired on December 1, 2006, and he could basically do any of those jobs because they each have a lower difficulty score. So this is basically how item response theory works and how it can be used in an industrial setting. I hope you're getting excited about how those of us who work in rehabilitation can benefit from this approach to measurement. I know I am. This has tremendous potential for our future in helping people avoid injuries and get back to work after they've become hurt or ill. So to summarize before we get into actually using the MTAP analytics software program, the MTAP is based on the spinal function sort and the hand function sort with new items added to fill the voids. We calibrated the library of MTAP items on more than 20,000 patients and we have linked responses to the United States Department of Labor's Physical Demand Characteristics or PDC system, as well as to activities of daily living and instrumental activities of daily living. We have co-calibrated the patient responses to the MTAP with more than 4,000 healthy subjects and we have also calibrated MTAP responses to EPIC lift capacity performance data. Now, let's get started with the use of the MTAP analytics software. I'm assuming you've contacted Matheson Development to purchase the MTAP analytics software. The software is composed of Excel macros, which are lines of computer code in an Excel workbook. Launch the workbook by double-clicking on the icon for the MTAP analytics Excel file. This is the first screen that you'll encounter. We'll take a few minutes now to orient you. After you launch the software, you'll need to enable the Excel macros that are built into it. The macros will be temporary code that will exist on your computer until you close your MTAP analytics session and shut down Excel. Click here to enable the macros. Now I want you to notice the workbook tabs. Each tab is a different worksheet in the MTAP analytics workbook that we'll use in this lesson. On the Start Here tab, select the age and gender for the person you'd like to evaluate. You'll need to do this every time because both age and gender have slightly different difficulty values for the items and different normative data. In this case, the example we'll use is a female, Cindy Jones, who is 32 years old. So go ahead and click on the button 30 to 39 female. This will automatically take you to this sheet. This is where you will enter your responses. 1 equals able, 5 equals unable, 2 is slightly restricted, 4 is very restricted, and 3 in the middle is restricted. If the person gives you an I don't know response, it's a 6. After you've entered all the data, you use Control B to do the analysis of the data. But let's hold off on that for a while. We're going to use some example information. I want you to go to the Examples tab now. Click on the Examples tab and select and copy Example A data. Altogether, there are three complex case examples that we can look at, but for this video lesson, we're just going to stick with Example A. I want you to select the 50 responses in this column and copy the selection. And then I want you to paste the data into the Answer Sheet tab. Go to the Answer Sheet tab. Go ahead and paste the data into this sheet. Once the data are pasted, click Control B to do the data analysis. When you click Control B, this is what you'll get. This is the graph of MTAP items that you can use for clinical correlation. This is on Cindy Jones, conducted on July 21, 2017. What you see are each of the 50 item responses made by Cindy as she went through the MTAP. There are several things that we're going to learn from this. Basically, this is a profile of the degree to which each of Cindy's responses varies from the expected response that we would have if she had a perfect pattern of responses. The degree that she varies from the perfect pattern of responses is indicated by two statistics, one called outfit and the other one called infit. 
These two statistics give us a sense of the degree to which Cindy's responses vary from a perfectly consistent set of responses. A general rule of thumb is that an infit score or an outfit score of above 1.50 requires clinical correlation. And basically what that means is that if Cindy has an infit score or an outfit score above 1.50, you look at the items that vary the most, and you ask Cindy about her actual responses to those. It's possible that she made an error. It's possible that she's over-limiting herself. It's possible that she's under-limiting herself. It's possible that she's frightened. Or it's possible that she's got something else going on that's actually limiting her that we need to know about. In any case, whenever we have an infit score above 1.5, or an outfit score above 1.5, we take a look at individual items that are probably contributing to that. Now I'd like to take a moment to help you understand what infit and outfit are by using some data. What I'd like to do is to demonstrate to you how outfit works by having you enter a score of 5 in these two boxes. After you've done that, click Control B, and this is what will happen. Items 1 and 2 now vary tremendously from what is expected, and the outfit score has increased to 4.45, above 0 0.50, a tremendous increase in the outfit score. The infit score has gone from 0 0.42 to 1.32. So when we have unusual scores, at the furthest extent of the person's ability range, the outfit score is the one that's most profoundly affected. Unusual scores as outliers will increase the outfit value. And now to demonstrate how infit works, enter a score of 1 in these three boxes. Click Control B and we'll go from the profile that we had after we entered the two outfit scores that were unusual to the profile that we have now, where outfit has been increased proportionally modestly, but infit has been almost doubled. And so infit increases to the degree in which we have unusual scores near the person's ability level. Basically what we're seeing here is that we forced Cindy's profile to indicate that she's much more capable of doing tasks that she shouldn't be capable of doing. Items number 46, 47, and 48 are very difficult items, somewhat above her ability to perform. She shouldn't be indicating that she's got no limitations at all with these items. Unusual scores near the actual ability will increase the infit value. And now the next thing I'd like you to look at is the Summary tab. There are several important pieces of data on this tab. First, on the left side of the tab, we see the percentile rankings for all of the different gender and age groups. For Cindy, a 32-year-old female, all of her scores are presented in the highlighted area. Her total rating of perceived capacity is 135. Possible is 200. Cindy has a rating to perceive capacity of 135 over 200. She also has an ability score of 0 0.89. The ability score usually ranges from minus 3.0 to plus 3.0. In this case, Cindy's score is slightly above average. And this makes sense because her percentile ranking is 65. She's at the 65th percentile with the midpoint or median score at the 50th percentile. So Cindy is about 15 points above the median score in terms of her 65th percentile ranking. Another set of data that we can look at is presented on the right side of these tables. Cindy responded to all of the items, so she had a possible score of 200. If a person skips some items, the score is going to be below 200. But Cindy responded to all of the items, so she had a possible score of 200. And again, we see that her total rating of perceived capacity is 135. 135 divided by 200 gives us a percent that we round off at 68. And here we have her infit scores and her outfit scores. 
The next thing that we'll look at has to do with Cindy's physical work capacity. To compare her to the full physical demand characteristics demands as described by the United States Department of Labor, Cindy's score is 54%. Her lift and carry score is 34%. Her walking and climbing score is 82%. And her handling score is 63%. I'll explain these in more detail in a few minutes. Going on and taking a look at Cindy's activities of daily living, in terms of self-care, it's 100%. Light housekeeping is 86%. Heavy housekeeping is 72% and heavy home maintenance is 17%. I will explain these again in just a few minutes. The last comparison here has to do with how the MTAP can be linked to the EPIC lift capacity test. The EPIC lift capacity test has six subtests. Subtest number three is the full vertical range of motion on an occasional basis. I use this in my practice to develop an expectation about the maximum acceptable weight the person should be able to lift in subtest number three based upon their MTAP performance. In this case, lifting at the 20 pounds maximum acceptable weight has a 63% probability, 50 pounds has only a 17% probability, 75 pounds of maximum acceptable weight has only an 8% probability, and there's no probability at all that Cindy would lift at 100 pounds. We'll talk about this in more detail later. So let's go on with our analysis of the data, beginning with the MTAP items for clinical correlation that we've already looked at. Outfit and infit are a good place to start in terms of investigating consistency of responding, but there are other issues that we ought to take a look at. The first issue we need to take a look at are the ADL scores by type of demand. The person's ability to perform self-care light housekeeping, heavy housekeeping, and heavy home maintenance have been evaluated by the MTAP responses. And this is what we usually get. Normally, we're looking for a stair step that goes down from self-care to light housekeeping to heavy housekeeping to heavy home maintenance. And what we find with Cindy is that there is an unexpected drop-off. Her heavy home maintenance score is much lower than what we would expect. Given the expected stair step drop-down, we should be looking at something in the area of 50%. What's going on? Why is Cindy's heavy home maintenance score so much lower? Well, let's take a look elsewhere. We start to get an idea about it here. This is the current work capacity graph based on Cindy's MTAP scores. Over the full range of PDC demands, Cindy is capable of handling 54% of those. That places her between the light and medium PDC level. But take a look at her lift and carry score. Her lift and carry score of 34% is much lower than the full PDC demands. This indicates that she's much more limited in lifting and carrying tasks than we would expect. Her ability to lift and carry is down between the sedentary and light range. Let's take a closer look at this. Work capacity in the MTAP can be broken down in terms of four factors. Handling, walking and climbing, lifting and carrying, and a combination of those, the full PDC demands that we've already seen on the previous chart. Now what we find here is that Cindy's ability to perform walking and climbing tasks is actually pretty strong, and her ability to perform handling tasks is pretty good too. Where she falls down and has extraordinary difficulty is with lifting and carrying. Now that's consistent with the previous chart and indicates that there may be an extraordinary problem with lifting and carrying we need to investigate. My own experience with clients like this is that she may be overprotective in terms of lifting and carrying. She may be frightened that she's going to re-injure herself in lifting and carrying tasks. Now we can't tell that just from these data but in a clinical setting, that's what I would investigate. I would follow this up with the EPIC lift capacity test and look at the progression of rating of perceived load and heart rate response that she gives me. And if there's a consistency between the EPIC lift capacity test and these current MTAP data, we're going to find that Cindy's going to overlimit herself in terms of lifting. Now that's a good place to start and we would have her go into our work hardening or functional restoration program addressing that particular issue. 
Now, here's our final clue that Cindy may be over limiting herself in terms of lift capacity. With people who are healthy, normal subjects, there's usually a stair step that we see in this graph as well. And what we actually see with Cindy is that there's a huge drop off from 20 pounds to 50 pounds. And so in terms of case management, what I would do with this is to go ahead and do an epic lift capacity test, just like I'd mentioned before, and take a close look at the degree to which Cindy is appropriately limiting herself or maybe over limiting herself. I wouldn't be surprised if she has a real fear of hurting herself, even in a safe and controlled lifting environment. And so to wrap up our tour of the MTAP analytics software, we'll take a look at the final report section. This is the top half of the report. It provides the basic information, Cindy Jones, 32 years old, female, the date of the evaluation, her in-fit score and outfit score, her ability score, her total score, and the percent of her rating of perceived capacity. And then we see the ADL scores by type of demand. And on the bottom of the report, her current work capacity. Below that is a section where we can record our interpretation of these data. I invite you to take some more time now with the analytics software and try some of the more complex cases. Add a knee injury to Cindy's lumbar injury, and then add a dominant hand injury to Cindy's knee injury and lumbar injury. This is going to be very helpful as you develop your ability to discern patterns of responses that the MTAP analytics software will give you based upon the MTAP responses from a person who's got a really complex problem. So thank you for your time and attention. I really appreciate your participation. Take care now.